Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So today is a really cold and rainy day, but as I mentioned before in my previous videos, every day is a good day to sketch. So today I'm going to sketch this view of my balcony and also the trees turning red outside on the street. So I really wanted to do a sketch in a tall panorama format, including a little bit of the sky and the maple leaves on top, all the way down to the balcony and the pot of flowers. So I just drew a frame and write down the date and date. So before I begin drawing, I'm using my fingers to do hand gestures to determine where the balcony rail is somewhere around the lower bottom. This is the top part of the balcony rails. Before I draw any more rails, I'm actually starting to draw this pot of flowers first because most of the rails are being covered by this pot of flowers. So now I'm just drawing the contour, the outline of the flower cluster and a little bit of the pot. Okay, and now I'm ready to draw the rails, the horizontal one and now the vertical ones. And adding these arcs on the top part of the balcony. Okay, so now I'm using very loose squiggly lines to draw the forms of the flowers inside this cluster shape. So instead of copying, I'm just actually drawing really quickly, kind of using my memory and my impression at the same time instead of copying exactly what's there. Okay, I think now the lower bottom part is pretty, pretty much done. Now I'm actually um, going upwards now, a little bit above the balcony rails are the tree branches. So I'm just trying to connect these tree branches closest to the balcony. And also inside the rail shapes. Just paying attention to the shapes inside the negative spaces in between the rails. Now I'm actually adding this car, which is parked on the other side of the street. It looks like it's landing on the balcony, but it's actually on the um, opposite side, up the side of the street. It's really interesting. Kind of like a juxtaposition here. Okay, and keep drawing the car and use a lot of um, dark shapes to show the dark windows and also the dark black color is also giving more density to this sketch. Okay, after drawing the car, I'm connecting this lamp right next to the car in relation to it. And then this tree right behind the car comparing the size and height in relationship to the car. Add a few more details around it. And these trees and fences behind, a lot of random shapes and objects around it. adding more of those um, balloon-shaped trees. 
Okay, I think this section of the、uh, sketch is pretty much done. Now I'm moving higher. Just adding this outline of the tree above this part. Okay, just keep it really simple, and then drawing the negative spaces inside this tree, the holes. Add a little bit texture using simple squiggly lines. Okay, I think I missed a little bit for the lower part. Now I'm just drawing this line separating the sidewalk and the street. The sidewalk. Okay, so now I need to add the tree form on the、uh, left hand side. So this lamp is being covered by these leaves. So when drawing a scenery like this, we don't really have to、um, capture every single leaf that's out there. I think what's the most important is to、uh, capture the placement of the general forms, like the place of the balcony, the flower pot, like the overall outline of the trees. Other details it, they don't have to match exactly. Okay, so in between these two clusters of trees, there is this house. Most of its part, its form, is being covered by the trees on on both sides. So I'm just trying to draw as best as I can. So the roof was kind of like a triangle, and the the rest of the parts are made of um a lot of rectangular shapes, very simple vertical lines, and the windows dark dark. And that's pretty much it. Okay, now I think the middle part of this image is done, and now I'm ready to move even higher. Now I'm just drawing this organic outline of the maple tree. After that, I'm just drawing further details. Not every single detail, but just the essential parts. The holes that I see in the tree. So after the right hand side is pretty much done, I'm moving on to the left hand side, just seeing these things as abstract lines and shapes. Okay, again the holes in the tree and the branches and twigs. I think the process becomes much more easier and relaxing when we try to see more abstractly. Okay, I think the drawing is done. Now I'm gonna show you my、um, very simple painting materials. Here's my etcher watercolor palette has twenty four half pens in it, and my two water brushes. One is pretty watery, the other one is for detail and the rag for cleaning the brushes. Okay, so when painting a complex scenery like this, I like to paint. The part that is on the back first. So in this case, is the sky and also the road behind or in between the balcony rails. The sky and the road has pretty similar colors. It's a rainy day, and the sky is having this kind of dark, dull blue tone. Adding that in between the negative spaces of the trees. Okay, so now I'm mixing this green, radiant green, mixed with yellow ochre for the color of the trees and bushes, using pretty loose brush strokes. Okay, now I'm grabbing some yellow for this part of 
a chrysanthemum. This is just the first layer. Just laying this vibrant yellow down in the area. Okay, so now I'm keep painting the large areas of trees using a mix of um, yellow ochre and viridian green or medium yellow mixed with viridian green for different shade or tone of green using very broad and broken brush strokes so because this is just the first layer, it's okay to be um, generous, to be really loose and using really large chunks of brush strokes. I'm going to go into the details later, but for the first layer, just keep it really loose and open. And these brush strokes are really helping to show the layers of leaves. Okay, so now I'm grabbing some magenta red and use smaller brush strokes to show the little bits of red leaves here and there not a lot of the leaves are, um, are red yet and some other trees have this more fresh green with light green and lemon yellow. Different species of trees have different tones of green. And now I'm just mixing my own black using purple and blue and a little bit green for the flower pot. Quickly using some leftover colors to paint the house in the middle. Brown for the roof. And now just adding the leaves color for the pot of chrysanthemum. And using very small brush strokes instead of trying to color in, I'm using brush strokes just to dot everything in. Keep adding any further parts of green for the trees and bushes near and far. Hey, now I'm moving on to this really important part is to give more contrast to this sketch. So I just mix a darker tone of green and add it on around the bottoms of the trees and bushes. Because today there's no sunshine, it's really hard to see strong contrast. But even on a really cloudy day or an overcast day, the bottom of the trees and bushes are um, pretty dark than the top and middle part. And also painting this car too. Darken the rooftop. So as you can see, I've also switched to a smaller brush for finer details. This is a Sakura water brush and the tip is very thin. It's great for thin lines and little dots of details. I'm also adding some little dots of red leaves around the middle. Some smaller leaf details inside and outside the balcony rails. A darker tone of green for the pot of chrysanthemum, especially around the bottom, is darker. Just adding these dark colors as I observe. So observation is really important in sketching a picture. Instead of assuming, trying to make it perfect. From our own idealism, we have to follow our true observation of the things that we see.
and paint the balcony rails with very thin brush strokes. They have shade too, and they're just white. Painting this tree trunk. Okay, so now I'm grabbing a mixing color with very thin green and brown and a little bit blue for the upper part of this sketch. As you can see, I'm using pretty thin dotting little dots of brush strokes to show the detailed shapes, forms of the leaves. And also, the previous layer was dry, so it's easier for these dots to stand out instead of merging with the previous layer. It's pretty important to wait for the previous layer to dry for these brush strokes to show really sharply. So now I'm adding and grabbing this mix of red and magenta, again using small dotting brush strokes to show the form of the red leaves. Now the trees looks that they have even more depths because of this layer of more detailed painting. A little bit red leaf, a little bit lower in between the green ones too. And I'm pretty patient and I like to work a little bit deeper by adding further red leaves that I see, mixing in a little bit of dark purple. Because some of the leaves, when they're half green and half red, they have a dark purple tone. Just a little bit here and there, not too much. This is nearing the end. So I'm keeping my brush strokes very uh, small and cautious. Adding some further bits of greens here and there too. Smaller details that I see around the bottom. Okay, so now I'm just working on the final polish, the last bit of grays here and there for the flower pot. Right, so here's the look of the finished sketch. I also add the time and the little note about the scenery and how I feel. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comment section. And I will see you very soon next time. You can subscribe to my channel for weekly updates.